Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I've got a couple of burls I want to get cut up into shape so I can turn them on the lathe. I'm looking for a natural edge on these ones. So I'll look at them for quite a while and then decide which way is best to make the cuts. some color in that. Look at it. Okay, this is what not to do. I don't have my ear protection on. So here I'm trying to get my ear protection on. The saw's running. Not a smart move. I put the saw down. It's trying to cut the dirt. I finally have my ear protection on. Now I make a little cut here where the mark is. And the mark on the other side. And guess what? Ran out of gas. Now the saw is all gassed up and I'm cutting through and by the way I'm using a still 391 saw and it has a 24 inch bar. You can see it just barely makes it through this piece. The bark ended up being pretty loose on most of these pieces, so wherever it was loose I just took it all off. These pieces are wet and I won't be able to get to them for a day or two. So I'm going to coat all the ends and then throw a plastic sheet over the whole thing to keep it from cracking. Because of the nice flat surface, I'm just going to use a face plate on this. Otherwise, for most other burls, I, I probably would start at between centers and then, uh, and then figure out how I want to mount it. But this has a nice flat face with the chainsaw. I'm using my Laguna 24 inch lathe for this turning on the uh, on the end of the lathe. 
These pieces are all just a bit over 24 inches, particularly with the corners. So I still like to, to turn something like this between centers. I think this is the safest. I'm using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge with a swept back wing and these videos showing the inside and outside turning are all sped up. The piece is actually turning relatively slow because it's, it's heavy and uh, it's causing the lathe to shake. I'm just now sizing and creating a tenon at this point. If you're enjoying the video, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe. It uh, gives me a bit of incentive to make some more of these videos. Unlike some burls, this, uh, this burl does not have a lot of figure and voids, but it does have some really interesting colors you can see there. I've got the bottoms of all four pieces done now and I'll start to work on the inside surface of these pieces next. Here you can see a fairly large crack on the outside surface. So I'm going to have to be very careful when I'm turning and coring out the inside of this to make sure the piece doesn't fall apart on me. If it didn't have so many cracks I might have actually considered coring some bowls out of this but because of all the cracks I'm just going to hog out all of the internal surface.
just as a reminder, this is wet wood and there's lots of flaws and cracks in these pieces. So I'm going to leave them relatively thick and uh, then let them dry and warp. And then I'll deal with them afterwards. Hopefully they haven't uh, moved and cracked too much. I've now moved the tailstock support and just finishing off the inside of the piece. Well, this piece is all finished being roughed out. You can see the general shape. It, uh, I'm just going to put some end seal on this now and it's going to need to sit for uh, maybe six to nine months. Or if I have some room in my uh, kiln, I'll put it in the kiln and speed it up and maybe this piece will be ready in, in more like uh, one to two months. In this piece, a chunk actually flew right out of it when I was turning. When you're wood turning wet wood, you often get lots of wet shavings. It's always great to see them, long curls, and just the smell of the wood. It's fantastic. Well, I've got all four pieces turned now, and uh, I'm going to apply a little bit of seal just to the ends of the pieces. Uh, you can see there's quite a few cracks in there. I would normally use anchor seal, but when there's when I find when there's cracks, I prefer to use a, a glue mixture. I'm just going to use just a white glue, but you can use a, the uh, sort of beige yellow carpenter glue as well. And I just uh, put a little bit of water in it, maybe one-fifth water to four-fifths glue, just to uh, make it a little bit more runny. Hey, check out the new t-shirt. Yeah, nice. Okay, so there's nothing too fancy or elaborate about putting this end seal on. And I'm only going to put it on near the ends. Uh, I find these burl pieces really don't crack too much on the inside. It's mainly the ends I want to worry about. And with these ones already having existing cracks, I'm probably going to fill those with epoxy anyway, later. There we go. That's all there is to it. Put on a nice thick coat, maybe even put on two coats. I decided to put the burls in the kiln after all. And here's my kiln. It's just an old oak freezer. And uh, you can see the uh, the burl pieces in here right now. And I've got a couple of light bulbs in here that I use to heat it up. And on this side you can see a fan and a temperature controller. And I have a few uh, a few wet vases that I've turned as well. So I'll leave that in here for uh, the next uh, four to eight weeks starting at around 26, 28 degrees C for the first week on to uh, 30 degrees for the second week. And then uh, from then on, I, I leave it around 32 degrees C.
Uh, this is the back of my kiln. You can see I've got some breathing holes here at the top and there's also breathing holes at the bottom. Well, that's the end of part one of this video. Stay tuned for part two. What I'm gonna do is take the pieces out of the kiln, fix up all the cracks. I might have to put epoxy in them or maybe CA glue, or just see how bad they are. And those pieces are gonna end up something like this with square, square edges where I did the chainsaw work and then a rounded bottom like this with maybe a little bit of a slant in. Yeah, so stay tuned for part two, probably be a few months before I get that out.